Hi everybody, it's Dwayne, Developer Evangelist at Git Kraken. Today we're taking a look at Git configuration, really taking a look at how it loads in the configuration settings from multiple places, what order it loads in, how you can get at those multiple files, and understand what's in them, as well as understand what happens when Git is not actually on your system, but you still are using Git, such as the case with Git Kraken Client. Git config can be overwhelming when you first encounter it. If you go to git-scm.com and look at the official documentation, the git config page is over 38,000 words long. There are a lot of options and tons of ways you can configure git. The purpose of this video is to take a step back, understand what it's actually loading with those configuration settings, and how to get at those settings and learn what's in them. That's a really great path to understanding how git works and optimizing it for your workflow. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably already have Git installed and you probably already used Git config. Git config global to set your username, Git config global to set your user email, and Git config global init.default branch to tell Git what to call the first branch when you initialize a new Git repo, in this case, main. Since we use the global flag, it writes those configuration options to your .git config file, which by default lives in your home directory. This isn't the first place or the only place that Git pulls configuration from. Git pulls configuration settings from a narrowing list of files, and each one has the power to overwrite the one above it. So system is the most wide of all of the configuration settings. Every time the Git CLI runs on your computer, it invokes the system configuration to be able to run for your particular system. Windows options are different than Mac options, which are different than Linux options. Global is what sits in your home directory. This is the .git config file we looked at a second ago. This would overwrite anything that you would already present in system. Local, narrower in scope yet, is what is defined inside of a git folder inside of each git directory. This would overwrite what's in global. Worktree and Blob are very specific and used in very narrow use cases. For our purposes today at this high level overview, we're not going to dig into those. Just know they're there. There are times when you might need Git config to work differently at the Blob level. You can do that. But let's instead dig into system, global, and local. The system level refers to your whole computer. Every time the actual command line tool Git is invoked, no matter who's invoking it on the system, it's going to intercept these config settings. Now, this is probably just going to be specific to your operating system and nothing to do with how you are using Git, more of how Git, the tool itself, can run. The global level is really referring to you as a user. This is why the .git config file is written at the home directory. It's anything that's defining you as a user, such as your username, uh, your user email, any of the specific settings you like, such as color or autocorrect, are all going to go in here. The local level, Git referring to everything as local, always, uh, is referring to what's in the Git folder itself. Inside of .git, you have a config file that tells specifics about that repository, such as setting remotes for various branches, and all that very specific to that repo minutia. So for this video, as I mentioned, we're not going to dig into every possible option or setting, or this video would be very, very long. Instead, we are going to look at these four commands and how we can use them to figure out what's in our git config, and then start understanding those options and lead ourselves down a path of figuring out how to optimize git for our own personal needs. So let's start with these first three, git config system list, git config global list, and git config local list. We'll come back to the last one last. Here I am inside VS Code, and I just happen to be looking at the GitLens repo. This would work no matter what repo you're looking at, and will work from any terminal that you prefer. I just prefer the integrated terminal of VS Code. So the first command we're going to look at is git config, and I'm going to say this is going to be at the system level. I want it to list my config. And that's it. That's the only thing in the system config. Every time git loads, it pulls in my OSS keychain as the credentials helper because, well, I'm on a Mac. That's how I'm managing SSH keys. Next up, let's take a look at the global level. And you can see, well, there's a lot of information there. Uh, I happen to use autocorrect that uh, kicks in after a couple seconds. Code is my 
default editor. Uh, I even have an alias in here. So if I do a git last, it will show me the last commit made in that repo because that's what the alias log minus one head set to set to do. Um, lastly, let's take a look at git config local. Local, and that's gonna get me quite a number of options. I could also see the same thing from going to my config over here inside my git folder. And sure enough, this matches one to one because that's exactly what it's reading from. If I wanted to add a new option here, I could say git config dash dash local and then set whatever option I'm trying to set. We're not gonna go through all the possible options today. That's not the point of this video, just to expose that this is what's available. The more you understand what's going on in config, the more powerful it becomes. So let's take a look at that last option I had on the list. So git config list show origin will show me all of the configuration set for that repo and my machine and show me where it's stored on my machine. Again, helping me understand where git config is set and where I can modify it. So I'm back in VS code, I've cleared the terminal, but I'm gonna run a git config lists and I want it to show me the origin. And sure enough, we already saw these options earlier, so I'm not gonna go through them all one by one, but I can see this definitely is my system setting. And this one, because it's my home directory, these are the ones in my global settings. And here are my local settings. So I can quickly identify where each of the settings lives. Now, as I mentioned earlier, very importantly, as we go down the list and narrow the scope, it will overwrite the level above it. So if I have set my user email and username here in my local.git folder config to be username someone else and user email someone else, then that is what Git will use to sign those commits. This comes in really handy if you are working with multiple personas in your repositories. So if you're working on a project for work and another project for personal OSS contribution, let's say, and you need to sign with different commits, but you need to stay logged in as your uh, work email for global, not a problem. Just update your git config per repo to update for your specific personal email and personal username. There are situations where git is not installed on your computer, but you're still using git. Git Kraken Client is a prime example. Git Kraken Client does not require you to install Git, the command line tool, on your machine. This is true of GitHub, GitLab, GitT, and many other services like that. They accomplish Git because Git really is a set of protocols and agreements on how version control can be accomplished rather than just strictly a command line tool. So where do we get our preferences for Git? Well, in the application settings. Here I am inside of Git Kraken Client. If I go click on the gear icon under my preferences, and sure enough, here under profiles is, well, my author name and my author email, where I'm gonna sign my commit message with these. Any other settings that I would accomplish through setting a global git config, I could probably accomplish through one of the other settings in the application. Git configuration is a very deep subject. There are many ways you can optimize git and configure it. We've barely scratched the surface, but hopefully you're walking away from this video with a better understanding of how Git configuration is loaded, which order it pulls those options in, and how they overwrite each other along the way. As well as understanding that if you don't have Git installed, you can still use Git by using a client like Git Kraken Client.